And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. As I described at the Pentagon, we're hitting ISIL harder than ever in Syria and Iraq. We are taking out their leaders. Our partners on the ground are fighting to push ISIL back, and ISIL has been losing territory. Our special operations forces are hard at work. We took out the ISIL leader in Libya. We've taken out terrorists in Yemen and Somalia. So we're sending a message. If you target Americans, you will have no safe haven. We will find you, and we will defend our nation. I feel better, you know, knowing that we have such a strong-willed, such a patriotic man in the presidency. I sleep better at night knowing that he's doing everything he can around the clock with the geniuses and intelligence. And I have such faith in the Department of Homeland Security. Now, it is true that uh, the enemies did slip through in San Bernardino because the government forbade anyone from looking at the social networking commentary for the last number of years. But look, if you want to make an omelet, if you want to make an omelet, as Karl Marx said, you got to break a few eggs. And on the way to this omelet called the New World Order, some of us have to die. We're the eggs that have to be broken. The sovereignty of America has been broken over Obama's knee. Oh, yeah. See, he's doing everything he can around the clock to make sure that Sharia is the law, not only of the land, but of the war, of the world. You may not see that. You may not know it. You may not want to hear it. You don't want to know about Islam's 1,400-year war against the rest of the world. But it's a fact of history. Congress just approved $1.6 billion as part of the new budget to resettle illegal aliens arriving at the border through the year 2018. That's right, Paul Ryan, who is Obama's beard. We're going to be calling Paul Ryan Obama's beard from now on. The beard, I don't understand. I don't know what it means, but we're calling him Obama's beard because there is no Republican Party anymore. There hasn't been for a very long time. And Paul Ryan is simply shuffling, as they say, the deck chairs uh, on the deck as the ship goes down. He is Obama's beard. He gave Obama everything that he dreamed of and then some, including extra money. Go ahead, take more money to resettle illegal aliens arriving at the border through 2018. Go ahead, have more money. We don't care. Christian school puts professor on leave for solidarity hijab. Christian school now is teaching Islam. Slowly but surely, little by little, that's how it goes. They have hundreds of years. They don't deal in uh, seconds. They don't deal in days. They don't deal in minutes. They don't deal in months. They don't deal in years. They deal in centuries. Meanwhile, a team led by Middle Eastern women were caught surveying the U.S. facility on the Mexican border. Women, women and children, team led by Middle Eastern women, rather, Caught surveying U.S. facility on Mexican border. Putin says Trump is a really brilliant and talented person. Even Putin knows how brilliant Trump is. Even Putin knows that Trump would be better for the safety of the universe than the creature that we have right now, the snake, the snake in the White House. There's no limit to the snake's desire to harm people. But I don't want to talk about it. I read you some of the headlines. Oh, yes, the Senate's going to investigate the defense secretary's use of personal email. You expected something else from Ash Carter, Mr. Pink Tie, another stooge they found from the, from the Beltway? The Senate will investigate defense secretary Ash Carter's use of personal email for work business to make sure he didn't send any sensitive information. Oh, please. Are you joking? Are you kidding me? He's, he admitted to a mistake in using personal email. Have you seen the faces of the men running our military and defense and security establishments? If you were a 35-year-old throat-cutting member of ISIS, would you be trembling in your headscarf? You'd say that they're a bunch of fat old weaklings, and they're not long for the world. That's what you'd say, because Obama cannot stand any competition. He will not put a young, vigorous, returning war veteran around him because he's no, he knows he's nothing compared to the most lowly private who has faced bullets in combat. But I don't want to talk about that. Nope. You know what I want to talk about? I don't even want to talk about Paul Ryan betraying America. 
giving a $1.1 trillion funding bill to transform America. $1.1 trillion, including $1.6 billion to resettle illegal aliens arriving at the border through 2018. You may as well, well, you may as well leave your own country because Paul Ryan, Obama's beard, fully funded DACA, fully funded sanctuary cities, fully funded all refugee programs, fully funded all of the Mideast immigration programs that have been exploited by terrorists in recent years. The beard has fully funded illegal alien resettlement. The beard has fully funded the release of criminal aliens. The beard has fully funded the H-2B foreign worker visa so Facebook can make more money. The beard has funded tax credits for illegal aliens. The beard has funded huge spending increases everywhere you can look. The beard has funded virtually everything that the far left has dreamed of their entire life. The only thing the beard, Paul Ryan, has not yet given Obama for is the internment of conservatives in FEMA camps. But it's still early in the regime's uh, last remaining months or years, whatever they may decide they want. Because if he decides he doesn't want to leave office, I'm sure the beard will find the fluke in the law to let the snake stay on to finish things up. I don't want to talk about that either. I want to talk about our cyber spying. I want to talk about the selective, selective service idea I came up with yesterday. Yesterday's show was one of my favorites. It was how to win at cyber warfare, stopping ISIS and China through a selective, selective service where we would draft computer experts into the military. We get the young computer savvy experts and draft them into a special division in the military. And we had a very vigorous conversation about that yesterday. I had hackers calling the show. I was honored that hackers listened to the show, and I realized afterwards why I liked hearing from them, because in essence, they have the same mentality I do. I am fundamentally hacking the narrative of the establishment. Do you understand what I do for a living is remarkable? There are other talk show hosts who are simply Republican frontmen. Despite their complaints to the contrary, they're frontmen for the Republican Party. Even if they say they're not Republicans and they attack them, they are Republicans. I'm not. I never worked for a Republican. I never voted for a Republican since maybe Ronald Reagan. That was about it. I'm not a member of the Republican Party because we have no parties. We have a one-party a one government. I called it a Democrat Republican Party in 1994. Now I call it Government Zero. It's even worse than I thought. So I care about national security. And I looked into the subject last night by going onto my Facebook account, and I found some good Facebook comments, which I want to share with you, because I think I have the brightest minds who listen to talk radio calling in. And the bright, well, actually, they don't call in. Generally, the brightest minds can't call in. They're either listening on the internet and doing other things. They don't call in. They listen. Entertainment, boredom, whatever. But they're listening. They like what I say. Sometimes, sometimes they don't. Like anything else, nothing's a hundred percent. But they like the fact that they hear a rebel on this show. They hear a rebel named Michael Savage, still a rebel at my age, and proud to be a rebel at my age. Always a rebel at my age, and I'm a rebel with a cause. That's the difference between me and the James Dean movie. I'm a rebel with a cause, and you can pretty much figure out what the cause is if you've listened to this show for any length of time. So I have a lot of rebels who listen to this program, and some of them are hackers, some of them are programmers, and the cyber war that we are engaging in, we are losing. We're losing to China. We're losing to ISIS. Everywhere you turn, we're losing the cyber war. And I want to win at the cyber warfare level, and I want to stop ISIS, and I want to stop China from stealing our ideas and penetrating our Defense Department computers. How can you do it? Do you think we're stupid? Do you actually think that we are dumber than the Chinese? Do you actually think that we're dumber than those rats in the desert? or in Pakistan where they're hiding in some toilet bowl in the third world. We have the smartest people on the planet, but we have the most deceived, deceptive president in the history of this country who does not want to tap into the talent that we have. This deceptive snake who is running the government will only pick compliant, weak old men around him, men with pink ties, men who have pink brains. Men who have pink on their brains are the only men he will, he will put around him. Idiots and morons. Idiots and morons who fail to protect us as they did in San Bernardino and keep their job. Why would he keep that idiot who runs DHS? Because he's a useful idiot. 
and he introduces the the war against ISIS today on his way to another vacation with the wife and kids. On the way to a vacation, he stopped to give a little speech. Then he's going to stop at San Bernardino and hug somebody. And then he's on off on another vacation to Hawaii after he worked so hard this year. He just got a new budget passed with his beard, Paul Ryan, uh, running interference for him. So I'm going to read you some of the comments. The phone number is 855-407-282. I can guarantee you that when Donald Trump becomes president, he will attract the best and brightest that we have in this country, not only to work in cyber cyber warfare, but at every level of government. We'll get rid of the sick sorority girls. We'll get rid of the wobblies in every aspect of government, and we'll have America back again. And then eventually we need a House of Un-American Activities Committee hearing to arrest those and try them for what they've done to this country. Every last one of them who've done damage to this nation, whether it's border security, cyber security, national security, every one of them should be tried for what they've done to this country because they know what they're doing, and there's no excuse for it. So Facebook comments include this. Lois Black says, instead of a draft, offer the companies a certain number of visas for foreign workers in exchange for them supplying the government with loyal hackers. Andrew Polak wrote, instead of a forced draft, why not put, put out bounties for successful hacks? How much is a bomb to take out a guy versus paying some hacker a couple of grand for every successful t cyber takedown? That's an interesting one. Jane Marie Sherber writes, a similar concept was highly successful during World War II at Bletchley Park in England. Some people have the type of brain that thrives on intense problem solving. Chess players, crossword addicts, computer hackers with no thought of monetary remuneration. They simply love the challenge. Sometime they come across as eccentrics, but in a war situation, if handled by someone who understands what makes them tick, they can collectively achieve incredible results. Jane Marie, that is true. That's if we had a leader who was patriotic. That's if we had a leader who wanted to beat them at the cyber game. He doesn't want to beat them at the cyber game any more than he wants to bomb the oil trucks. Don't you understand that we have a man who is either playing for the other side or not playing at all? Don't you get that yet? Here are some other Facebook comments. Michael Eddings says, I wonder why we can't sift through all the current laws and find one that would apply to a U.S.-based company aiding and abetting terrorists by allowing their services to be used to orchestrate their horrendous acts. Facebook should self-police terrorist activity or face treason charges. Same with Microsoft's Xbox and Sony's PlayStation. If a trucking company, company knowingly allows their trucks to traffic drugs, wouldn't they be liable and face punishment for not reporting it to law enforcement? Amen to that, Michael Eddings. That's right. No one is too big to fall. I have said for a long while now that Twitter, Facebook, every one of them, by not engaging in the cyber war that we must engage in to survive as a civilization, they are aiding and abetting terrorism. And they themselves are part of the uh, problem, not part of the solution. Philip Wellington says, selective, select, oh, I can't go on because we're almost out of uh, this first stop set. Now, another one says that I have a flaw in my idea about forcefully recruiting hackers and conscripting them into the military to counter cyber terrorism. And he'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what he wrote. If you care to call, and I'm going to also give you a little background on Israel's Unit 8200, their super secret cyber spy agency. That is at a science park in Beersheba, southern Israel. They have the brightest, youngest teenagers working in cyber security in Israel. Why don't we have that here? Instead, we have a president who encourages Ferguson and Baltimore because that's what he does. That's how a snake operates. That's what I see. And it's very unfortunate for you. And I shall return. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. 